Hey everybody, what's going on? It is Tuesday. Kaplan and crew, Grande, Brown Man, the whole mishbucha, you get the deal. Um, give me a minute. I say a minute. It usually takes longer than that to say thank you to all of our great partners. Seven Mile Casino, I start with you guys. Seven Mile Casino is where we are, the Seven Mile Casino Studios. If you're looking for a place to watch games, play blackjack and poker and other table games, have an incredible dinner uh, with Sammy's Restaurant and Bar. Also, the brunch is considered the best in South County, according to San Diego Magazine readers. No, no smoking at all. Right off the freeway, only seven minutes south of downtown San Diego, and it's about a quarter of a mile north of that new Gaylord project that they've got going on in Chula Vista. Great location, no smoking, awesome gaming, incredible food, Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. Any problems with gambling, you call 1-800-GAMBLER. Okay, hey, let me keep rolling here. My guy, Brett Weiss from Mushroom Life, Life Brew Coffee. Literally, three months ago, I didn't know there was such a thing as mushroom coffee, okay? But it seems to be like a big craze because now if you go to the stores, you can find mushroom coffee on the shelves. And Brett is now giving us a 30% discount, okay, on the coffee. He actually asked me, does anybody click on the QR codes? Me and Browner did a full analysis yesterday. Lots of you guys are clicking on the QR codes. Click on the QR code right here and go to the Life Brew website. Use our code KLIFE. And they're going to give you 30% off. We need to change that, Alex. It's 30% off right now. Life Brew. Life Brew Coffee. You guys are going to love it because it just makes you so focused. I said to a friend of mine the other day, you got to try this. He goes, oh, I don't want to get high. I'm like, no, it's not about getting high. It's about getting focused. So you're going to try it. You're going to love it. And, uh, and support our sponsor there, Life Brew. Okay, I'm going to keep on rolling. Hey, our guys at Blenders. I talked to Chase Fisher yesterday, the CEO of Blenders. I said, dude, we got to get you on the show. Um, he said, well, I'm not going to go to the Grand Prix of Miami. I said, well, I want to talk about the fact that you guys are even involved in F1. The other thing I want to talk to Chase about is my man spent so much time and so much effort and gave so much money to the San Diego State basketball team for NIL. And then these kids are all hitting the portal and they're all going to other places where they can make more money. And I wonder what that feels like for a guy who put in so much time, effort and energy. Well, guess what? Um, he's crushing it. These blenders are awesome. The lenses are great. The fashion, the style, the price point, uh, the ability to go into the store, Encinitas is where I go, PB, uh, and also the website, blenderseyewear.com. Hey, um, congratulations and welcome back, Tori Holistics, to our, our like our favorite, Ruthie Edelson. Let me tell you something. Um, Ruthie left Tori. Charlie Rolfs came in as their chief marketing officer. Charlie was great, but it is so awesome to have Ruthie back at Tory Holistics, California Holistics, and Oxnard Holistics. So many of you guys know Ruthie. You love Ruthie. I love Ruthie. She's our friend in real life. Um, so happy to have her back at Tory Holistics, California Holistics, and Oxnard Holistics. The code is Kaplan Crew. So if you're going to buy cannabis products for pain, for sleep, for anxiety, for recreation, you do it at Tory, California, and Oxnard Holistics, and you use our code Kaplan Crew, and that's going to save you 20 bucks or 20% when you spend $75 or more. Hey, prize picks. Guys, guess what? Feeling good. Back. Joker, LeBron. That was it. You play the stars. Okay. You know what you're going to get. I didn't play AD last night. Thankfully, I didn't because he got bumped and he got hurt and he had to leave and then he didn't score as much and he couldn't shoot. So LeBron, Joker, winners. Hey, it's Taco Tuesday today. Make sure you have that prize picks app. Download prize picks. Use our code, great friends. You mat they will match your first deposit 100 up to 100 bucks. So you put in 100, they put in 100, you got 200. Let's play ball. Prize picks. Download the app and use our code. Great friends. And uh, lastly, let me mention our friends at Mountain Trust Realty Services. 858-376-1299. As I always tell you, never make a move in real estate without first talking to Gary Cooper. Buying, selling. You need to refinance for some reason. You need a home equity line of credit for some reason. Given these rates, but talk to Gary before you ever make a move like that. 858-376-1299. And you know what? Just one more thing. I haven't mentioned these guys in a long time. Our friends at AG1, I take this product every single day and I haven't mentioned them in a little while. Hopefully you have your subscription, you have it going. Use our QR code or go to athleticgreens.com slash Kaplan. Me and my daughter meet in the kitchen every morning at 7.30 a.m. We make our AG1, we put in our vitamin D, we toast, we say cheers, and we slug it down. I love the product. You talk about like, Staying healthy, you're not going to, let I say this, I take it because I'm like, I don't want to get sick. I want to take all the vitamins. I want to take all the minerals, all the probiotics, all the superfoods, everything in one 
with 12 ounces of water and then the free vitamin D and the five free travel packs. Use our code, uh, athleticgreens.com slash Kaplan or use the QR code. All right, let's start the show. Yo, great friends. What's going on? It is Tuesday afternoon. Kaplan and crew just hitting the airwaves of 1090. So broadcasting on tra traditional, terrestrial, old school AM radio all throughout Southern California, San Diego, Orange County, LA, uh, up to Grande's Hood, the Oxnard 805 area, Santa Barbara, and even beyond into the Central Coast. To everybody that's with us on YouTube, appreciate you guys. Remember, we are headed towards 10,000 subscribers. We're over 8,000 now, but we're headed towards 10,000. So make sure you get involved in that YouTube chat today. To everybody who's on our audio podcast platforms, listening on your own time, usually a couple of you guys are a day behind and you'll hit me up and you'll go, yo, I was just listening to a Monday show, but it's Wednesday. I got you guys. I know what you do. And then tonight to all of our TV viewers on Cox, your view, we are in the seven mile casino studios. 7milecasino.com, got Grande, got the Brown Man, and we are all ready to go. You know, yesterday at the beginning of the show, I kind of laid things out like, okay, look, there was all this great basketball playoff stuff over the weekend. There was some interesting baseball over the weekend. We still were kind of dealing with the NFL draft from what had happened Thursday, Friday, Saturday. As of today on Tuesday, I'll tell you for me, from a sports perspective, my top two thoughts are, A, the Padres are in trouble. I mean, right now, the Padres are in big trouble. And look, I got it. You know, people talk about overreacting in April. Um, it's not that I'm overreacting because the season is so long. It's just that the Dodgers are so good and the Dodgers keep winning night after night and the Padres keep losing night after night. And I'm not saying that this thing's going to get away from them before we even get to May. But man, I'm telling you, a few weeks ago, Padres took two out of three in LA and I was like, wow, okay, good. I like the fight. I like the heart. And now I'm like, what's going on here? And we'll, we'll get into detail about that. The other place where my head at is after last night, the Lakers lost to Denver. I actually was having this thought in my head. Like, I think it's time for the Lakers to start really, really considering what life is like after LeBron. But then after that game and the heart and the fight and the battle and another last second game winning shot by Jamal Murray, I'm like, you know, maybe the Lakers aren't really that far apart from the Nuggets, but maybe they're a player or two away. And then as soon as the game was over and they went to the post-game press conference and somebody asked LeBron James, hey, LeBron, was this your last game as a Laker? And he was like, uh, yeah, I'm not going to answer that right now with this kind of like blank eating grin on his face. I'm telling you, man, I love having LeBron on the Lakers because I love the drama. On the other hand, um, I look around the NBA and I see guys like Shea Gilgis Alexander, um, Anthony Edwards, Luka Doncic, um, even a guy like Wemby. I know that San Antonio was bad this year, but he's an up and coming guy. These guys are in their 19, 20, 21, 22 years old. And LeBron's going to be 40. And you know what? Um, for him to, uh, to kind of just have that look last night, nah, I'm not going to answer that question. I don't know, man. It really turned me off. So those are kind of two thoughts on my head, and we'll get to, to get those stories in greater detail. Grande, I'll, I'll throw it over to you for an initial thought. You usually are not on the same page with me. Yesterday, I had basketball, baseball, mm -hmm. draft, and you went mm -hmm. soccer. What's on your mind today? Oh, and I don't have that today. I don't have any soccer today. I don't have any hockey. I don't have any F1. I don't have any Indy. I have no NASCAR. I just have angst, a lot of angst towards my NBA team. Because well, you're, who's your NBA team? The Lakers. Wait a second. Um, Wait a second. Because because oh. I thought like the season started last night for you and ended last mm. night for you. Hmm. It was like the yeah, first game you well, actually like, were texting me during the game. But that's like the game. You know, that's because that's my team. Mm -hmm. hmm. How I feel about my team is 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 the problem, and the big the big problem is um, that I think that they're just going to run it back. They might be a new coach, which would make me a little happy. But at the end of the day, when you're when you root for the L.A. Lakers. You know, you're rooting for a team that's supposed to win championships. And if you think they're close, <laughs> all right, cool. One and eight against that team, you're not close. And here's why you're not close. Because your best player is 39. And that was his absolute ceiling last night. It was an incredible performance. It was a gutty performance. But that's all he's got. 
And in the NBA nowadays, that's not good enough. Sorry. It's not. You got dudes like Jalen Brunson dropping 40 plus, almost 50. You got Embiid dropping 50. You got guys, young guys like Anthony Edwards and Shea, like you brought up on the West, Jokic doing whatever. Jamal How about Mur- Devin Booker? What about Devin Booker? <clears throat> Devin Booker the other night scored, how much was it, 45, 40 something? They lost. They, they lost. lost, but I'm just saying, but right. he's the only guy, he's carrying his team. You know? Sure. So, but I, my point is just if you think the Lakers are close, and I've been arguing with the guy back and forth who's a freaking know it all on Twitter, and I'm just like, listen, dude, if you want to feel that way, feel that way. Cause I do think that the ownership is going to go that way because she's petrified of not having LeBron James on this team. So, whatevs. I will just say this, though. You know, listen, um, they lost in this series that the Lakers just lost. They couldn't hold a 10 point lead in game one. They couldn't hold a 20-point lead in Game 2. They certainly weren't going to come back when they're trailing by 12 going into the fourth quarter in Game 3. They were able to maintain and hold a lead in Game 4. And yet again, they had a lead in this game and couldn't hold on to it, and it took a last-second shot to beat them. All I'm saying is is that Anthony Davis got hurt last night, and I'll just say it like this because, you know, I just think he's soft. Oh, because every time I put my thumb up, the uh, software kind of gives me a yep. thumbs up. Yeah. Love it. Um, I know I do too, Brown. I wish I could do it consciously. <laughs> um, I I just, the difference between the Nuggets and the Lakers are like last second shots. They're, I just don't think they're quite as far apart as we think. In other words, I mean, listen, your point is fair. They lost 11 straight to them. I think they're, what is it? One in 12 in the last, whatever it is. But they're they're not getting blown out. And I think you're right, by the way. I think Jeannie is completely petrified of what life would be like after LeBron James. What do you say to all this, Brown? I think last night proved two things. One, it may be time for the Lakers to move on from LeBron James from a basketball standpoint. Two, from a business standpoint, they better not move off from LeBron James. (laughs) I can tell you right now, he going to be back because the business of basketball determines that he going to be back. His son going to be on the Lakers. And so everybody need to get comfortable because Darvin Ham going to be back too. They got beat by a better team. That's the end of it. Period. End of story. Now, if Minnesota would have done this to them, yeah, we got problems. If OKC would have done this to them, oh, we got problems. They lost to the uh, the last year's champion who also beat them in a, in a very similar fashion. To, they just got beat. And it's okay. It happens. They ran into a better team. 80 plays 70 plus games. I think they said Austin Reed played 70 plus games. And LeBron had a fantastic year for somebody his age. They were in seventh place. Okay? With all with all that, the knock on AD was injury, injury, injury. AD played more games this year than he's ever played in his career. They were in seventh place. Like they lost to a better team. So the idea that you can fire the coach, because this is what everybody's yelling now. Fire Darvin Ham, fire Darvin Ham, fire Darvin Ham. How many coaches you need for LeBron? How many coaches you need? How many? How many? Because at this point, it's a graveyard. I, I Somebody tell me, this guy needs a new coach every other year? For what? Like, the best LeBron ever had in a four-year run was coached by Eric Spolstra, ran by Pat Riley. The structure of that made LeBron James a legend. So the idea now that you should switch coaches every other year because you don't win it just doesn't make sense, man. Jeannie ain't got that kind of money either, by the way, because let's get to that too. Jeannie's poor in NBA standards. She rich to us because she owns the Lakers. But uh, amongst other NBA owners, she broke, dog. She homie on the corner shaking the cup for change. She ain't got it like that. So she can't let LeBron leave from a financial standpoint. So Y'all better get comfortable because this roster is going to look real familiar. They're going to change some things around the edges because some guys that were hurt didn't necessarily deliver the way that they thought that they would. The Vanderbilt's, the Jackson Hayes, the, 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 these guys didn't deliver for the Lakers. Rui may be moved on, but you you, you don't want to repeat what Phoenix is doing. You get three top heavy guys, you got nobody else. Well, that, 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 uh, is, that is the case to be made for – trying to make the team better with its core is looking at teams like Minnesota or Denver or yeah. Oklahoma city yeah. teams that are, are consistent and they they're building year after year. 
Um, the case against, um, you know, trying to just find another star is Phoenix because Phoenix thought that they could do it with just, you know, you know, like you say, top heavy stars. And not only do you have a team in Phoenix, that's not very good, but you got way too much attitude over there. I mean, what Bradley Beal did the other night to Frank Vogel is an embarrassment. Um, so unprofessional, but Alex, I kind of, I kind of feel like, like Browner's right. What other team is going to bend over backwards for LeBron? and virtually guarantee that Bronny's going to be part of their team. You know, I mean, uh, look, look at the look at the 14 teams that didn't make the playoffs and they would all bend over backwards to do that. They would all take Bronny to have LeBron. At 100%. Yeah, maybe. The first round pick by the way. With a lottery maybe. pick if it took that. <laughs> maybe. Mm-hmm. All I know is this is that uh LeBron's business and LeBron's life is in LA and yep. his comment last night about, you know, is this your last game and he gave you that look he kind of gave you that like a Bill Cosby kind of eye roll smile. You know, it was a little yeah. weird. Uh, I will. You have uh, that? Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. Here, let, let's let's take a listen to what. Uh, Tonight, was there any thought at all that, you know, this could have been your last game with the Lakers? Um, I'm not going to answer that. Appreciate it. For, for for Laker fans that hate the Lakers while LeBron is a Laker, that's Ooh, why that's that's why they hate him. That's, well, that's why me. They, <laughs> tell me. Uh, Go ahead. Me yeah, tell me. No, I mean he does this. This is what he does. So you you can't have an offseason not talking about LeBron. I know. I saw if it were a, honestly, honestly, yeah. he's gonna opt out the day of the finals, the way A Rod opted out of his like Rangers contract <laughs> during the World Series because it's like, wait, I haven't been on the TV in two months. And everybody Hold on got one bad. Side. Hold on a second here. Hold on. Let me make this about me real quick. Hey, Rich. Rich, excuse me. Uh, there's no headlines about me on ESPN.com. Should we opt out right now? Braun, it's game seven of the finals. Yeah, right. Should we opt out right now? Because I think we should. Yeah. Yeah, this is – I saw a, a tweet this morning from Barstool, and um, here's what it said. A tale as old as time. LeBron chokes in the playoffs, immediately starts his own circus about leaving the Lakers and playing somewhere else. And um, I know it's it's for me last night when he did that, I was like, you know what, man, that's why certain people absolutely are disgusted that you are a Laker. Right. And honestly, you know? if you're disgusted by that, you're just you, you're just not paying attention. Like you knew that was coming. <laughs> I was saying that doesn't even bother me. It didn't even bother me a little bit. Like people were so upset about it. And I was like. What do you think he was going to say? Yeah, I'll be back. We're going to fight hard and be back. And Darvin's are my guy. No, come on, man. Pay attention. You've been in this league for 25 years. LeBron is playing chess against LeBron. This makes no sense for him to do that. His best option is to remain with the Lakers from a financial standpoint, from a basketball standpoint, and from what he has left of his career standpoint. At but not necessarily from winning a championship standpoint. That, that ship is sailed. 100% not. That ship is sailed. Because if he goes to another team, it's not going to be his team. He's won an NBA championship as the number one option every time he's won the title. That's why he's been the finals MVP the four times he's won. If he goes to another team where he's not the best player, he will lose credibility for that title. Like, again, he's thinking about being labeled the greatest player ever. So statistically, he has achieved that. He is statistically the greatest player ever. He wants another championship to be known as the greatest player ever, period. And he can't do that as the second banana somewhere else. Where is he going to go? Let me ask you guys this question. Because last night there was a point in the game where AD gets hurt and you get into the fourth quarter and LeBron LeBron is just going downhill, going to the basket time after time after time. And I know I sent out a tweet that was like, LeBron's going to have to do this on his own. And I really question, like other than LeBron, and Austin Reeves, I think D'Angelo Russell maybe one basket. Did anybody else score in the fourth quarter other than LeBron and Austin Reeves, Reeves for the Lakers? Yeah. Is that it? That was it. But that's I the mean, NBA. But, that's but the NBA. A, but AD. But I don't like, want Dinwiddie taking shots in the fourth quarter. Right. Yeah. I don't want yeah. Corey and Prince touching the ball Correct. in the fourth quarter. Right. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, but, and if AD can't lift his, sh- his shoulder, his arm above his head, yeah. then, then he took, by the way, he took one shot in the second half and he missed mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Like that's crazy. <laughs> the fact that the Lakers were even in that game is crazy that he took one shot. Well, like, 
the, but the, but he the, took, you hear what I just said? Yeah, he took, he took one shot, one right shot in the second half. Right, but he also took Jamal one Murray shot, taking one shot in the second half. But but he took one <laughs> shot to the shoulder, and he he was down on the ground like he was a soccer player. I mean, <sighs> he got hit by Michael Porter Jr. And honestly, the way he goes down, you thought he broke his back. And in a matter of seconds, he was like, oh, I'm okay. I'll, I'll play. He's down face first on the ground. Every player is standing around him. I'm like, okay, this isn't just like, hey, it, it hurts. It hurts a little bit. It's like major, major injury. He even went back to the locker room, came back, totally ineffective. I mean, he did have a block. I mean, he definitely couldn't shoot the ball. But you know how like when soccer players fake injuries? Don't do that to soccer players. <laughs> this is the second game. This is the second game. It's bad for soccer quarter. players. Bad for you soccer compare players. them to AD. Really? Come on, man. He that gave you nothing. Again, that's the second time in the fourth I quarter. There was a sniper that got him nothing. in the arm. Yeah. So I was like, oh. Can I do? Was, I do want to. And great, obviously, Browner will. Browner will be mad, but I don't really care. I will push back on one thing. Uh the the di- the difference between Darvin Ham being thrown under the bus and Frank Vogel being thrown under the bus is very clear and obvious, isn't it? Like you guys hammered the fact that Vogel wasn't a fit for the, for the locker room. Like you guys kept pounding me on, they're going to bring in a guy who's going to command respect from players. Cause he's one of them. He's one of us. Mm-hmm. The biggest difference with Darvin Ham is he's just not a good coach. And those are the reports that are coming out. Like the players aren't complaining about Darvin Ham, the, the, the person like the way they were about Frank Vogel. And the way the Suns are throwing him under the bus now, they're complaining about this dude doesn't know when to play us. This guy doesn't know any sort of rotations. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't know when to call timeouts. Which, by mm-hmm. the way, yesterday was on full display. Mm-hmm. So, like, I think there's a very big difference. And you can you're right, not by the way. Agree. No, no, you cannot right. agree with no, me, you, Browner. And right. I genuinely no, no, no. You're right. You're, no, it's because you're no, so blinded. No, to, here's, to be proven here's, right. But you're here's not. what we did. Here's what we did. <laughs> I'm we right. said, I know we said this. Frank Vogel was not a fit for the Lakers because. He wasn't a former player, and he's a white guy strategy coach. What they needed was a former player type who's a big, strong, physical black guy coach, okay, because the brothers in the locker room weren't going to respect Frank Vogel, and that was on full display when uh, when you had Brody disrespecting Frank Vogel. And you know what? I thought that they needed that sort of coach, but they didn't need a guy who was a first year coach, a first time coach, and that is what makes the Lakers so similar to the Chargers. Seriously. Ownership from the Lakers and the Chargers, very, very similar. So I just They're broke. So, so broke is the word. <laughs> That's a very similar. Broke. The idea that a guy who made it to the Western Conference Finals last year, you know, and, mm-hmm. and got beat by a better team, all in all accounts, the, the the Lakers had a better year this year than they did last year, so the team got better in the regular season, mm. and just got beat by a better team in the same position again this year. That the it, the coach isn't good. I just that's very difficult for me to accept. When again, you have to take into account who's on the team. No, nah, it doesn't. It doesn't bother it, me it, at all. I've seen it in football a million times where the coach if, stinks. And and the players win in spite of the coach, and they make it to the playoffs, and it it hides the warts of the team. I I um, I if, I if you're gonna if you're gonna tell me that mm-hmm. anybody out there available can coach mm-hmm. LeBron James okay, from now, an now you're standpoint, mm-hmm. then you're in trouble. Well, that's a different <laughs> so conversation. You're del- yeah. No, 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 that's no, it's not. Conversation. No, it's not. You're mm-hmm. delusional, sir. You're <laughs> delusional. If you think you're gonna <laughs> give anybody a check to be the head coach of the Lakers. And they're gonna have LeBron's full yeah. attention. Yeah, no, stop. That's not gonna no. happen. Well, listen. That's why he left Miami. He don't like being coached. And Cleveland once, mm-hmm. and Cleveland again. Mm-hmm. And that's why at every one of those stops, except for Miami, where there was proper structure, mm-hmm. he had multiple coaches. His 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 stint at every stop. But by the way, that's not a it's not a LeBron problem. That's an NBA problem. That's a that's all across the league. Not like this. Not like this. Yeah, ask not Phoenix. like this. Ask Kevin well, Durant listen. again. Again. Ask Giannis. Like I said. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. LeBron, how many you can, coaches? And I get it. I, and I get it. How it's many LeBron. coaches have Giannis had? Uh, I, mean, I don't what? know, but he, but he, he just fired a good one. Uh, he's on his second one this year. So, Well, yeah, let me but, do this. Let me do this. We got a lot to get yeah, to. three coaches in less than a year. 
Well, there, there, there's more to this story. We'll get to, to it. We'll, we'll, yes, but hold on a second. Let me just have a second to promote our friends at Prize Picks because last night. Don't bring them to, into this. Well, no, I have to bring them into it. Because of Jokic and because of LeBron and the performance the two of them had last night, winner you're looking at a winner people okay for someone who's been struggling and someone who's been ice cold like d'angelo russell in game three last night i heated things up because all i decided to do was play the stars play lebron play Jokic. today's taco tuesday guys i'm looking right now browner listen to this cleveland uh jared allen his total tonight 13 and a half points you like that play or not because it's down from 16 and a half points what do you think like it like it like it you do okay well then i'm gonna play it uh, Taco Tuesday today. They're giving you a big discount. So make sure you download the Prize Picks app. Use our code Great Friends. They will match your first deposit 100% up to 100 bucks. Join me, Grande, Brown Man, and all of our friends that are playing on Prize Picks. Three million of us are all playing on Prize Picks. Use the QR code that's on the screen. For those of you listening on radio, download the Prize Picks app and use our code Great Friends. And it's Taco Tuesday and it's time to cook, baby. All right. Prize picks. Download that app. All right, listen. We started with the Lakers. Let us finish up the Lakers, and then we'll move into the problems with the Padres. Coming up, this is Kaplan and Crew. Hey, great friends. It's Kaplan and Crew. Got Grande and the Brown Man. And we are in the Seven Mile Casino studios. And as always, I want to remind you of the website, sevenmilecasino.com. If you are looking to play blackjack, poker, other table games, if you want a great brunch on the weekends, best in South County, according to San Diego Magazine readers, if you want a great dinner at Sammy's Restaurant and Bar, it's inside the casino, no smoking, easy parking, open 24-7, right off the freeway, and only seven minutes south of downtown San Diego. What else do I have to tell you that as you're listening right now, you go, he's right. Seven Mile Casino is like the very best place to go. It is. Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. Any problems with gambling, you call 1-800-GAMBLER. Oh, by the way, Browner, on Saturday night when we were all at the Kraken, mm -hmm. uh, Tommy Tommy was showing me pictures of him playing poker at a different casino, by the way. Oh. And, he's, and he's shooting video of himself playing poker. And I'm like, I don't know, T. That doesn't seem like legal, man. I don't know, you know. He's like, well, look, look what they've got. Look, he's what seventy. Got. He don't know. He's seventy. Right. He don't care, man. He, he don't just know. Using cell phones. Yeah, he, at, right. he don't know. At seventy years old, he's like, I don't care. Yeah, read the signs. I'm doing my own thing. I know. I know. I know. So, I don't know. Can you do that? Like, like, can you really do that in a casino? Can you like take video of of yourself playing cards? If if you're older than a casino, you can. As long as you're not cheating. <laughs> well, the next right. picture was like him and the and the pit boss, and then the next picture is him and the dealer. You know. And so that's, that's how he gets you. Yeah. That's how he gets you. He will right. you in that yeah. old man charm, <laughs> old man charm with young man yeah. looks. Mm. Yeah. I wonder if we can get a new, you know, cause with, with AI now, I'm sure I can put in some code and see, I want to see who gets more mentions on this show than Tommy, Tommy. Okay. No, but he nobody. is number one, like guy nobody. talked about on the show. It's my like, guy. Yeah, and I think nice. second is not even close. Well, I think Joe Rigby's probably second. Yeah, but it's uh, not even close. Uh, yeah, Miss Molly. Miss Mo hey, speaking no, of Joe Rigby, close. speaking of Joe Rigby, two things. Number one, shout out to Joe Rigby. I saw he hates, he hates being mentioned on the show. Well, you know what? I saw his video it. from I want to say Saturday night. The reason he didn't get up to the cranking with us is because mm -hmm. he was down at the SEALs game. I got to give this guy so much credit. Shout you out. Know, when San Diego lost the Chargers. And people didn't know where to put their sports energy and their sports money. He became a Seals fan. I think I've been to like one Seals, two Seals games, like indoor lacrosse in like the last, I don't know, how many years has it been? Three years, four years, whatever it is. I, I don't go to those games. He does. Like he's religious about it. He's got the gear. He buys the merch. He got the season tickets. He takes pictures and posts them on social media. And he had this video the other day where I guess they put him up on the, the Jumbotron at, uh, at the sports arena. And I'm like, Joe, you're the man. I mean, talk about a great sports fan locally. Like, he probably didn't even like lacrosse four years ago, you know? But it said San Diego on the jersey. And he's like, I'm into it. So the thing about Joe is, you know, Alex, we did not finish the Brown facts. Right. And so even though we are done with the NCAA basketball tournament, there is still a bracket for the NBA playoffs. We, we got to finish the Brown facts, I think. Okay. All right. No problem. Now, 
Now we were talking about the Lakers and we were talking about what's going to happen to the Lakers. And I will tell you guys this, that I presumed the Lakers were going to lose on Saturday last weekend, mm -hmm. game four at home. And I had been told by a very, what I would call reliable connected source that on Sunday, the, the Lakers were going to fire Darvin Ham. You got sources in the Lakers now, dog? I don't oh, exactly. LA Cap. I don't, really, Cap. I don't know if I, don't know if oh, I really have sources. I mean, you just said I have a very a reliable of, source. I, mean, I got a couple of people. Like, so that's yeah. literally what you I just said. I got a couple of people close to the situation. What can I tell you? You know, I mean, I got a couple of people close. I mean, you can imagine you work up there. You work for the Laker station. You get to know a lot of the Laker people that are close to it. And the next thing you know, you got a source. Yeah. How about that? It's impressive. How about that? LA cool. sources. You cool. know, LA Cap got his own set of LA sources. I see. You know? Huh. Interesting. And that source told you. This source told me that oh. assuming the Lakers were going to get swept on Saturday, that on Sunday, Darvin Ham would be fired. Now, okay. now earlier today, I guess one of the top like NBA insider reporter type guys, this guy Sham Sharania. Sham. Yeah, Sham, Sham Sharamia, Sharania. Mm -hmm. He went on McAfee this uh, earlier today, and he said, according to his sources, I'm sure his are better than mine, that Darvin Ham's going to get fired. Is that right? Well, he's, I think you say sources. I think he said high-ranking officials, I think. Ooh, but I could, oh, be, oh. I could be wrong. I could okay. be wrong. High-ranking officials hear. sounds better than sources. Mm -hmm. Here he is. Darvin so. Ham, um, I'm, I'm told his job is in serious peril. Mm -hmm. The expectation is yes. that it is highly unlikely uh, from what I'm told, that he's going to be back for a third season as Lakers head coach. So um, you think about rotations that happen over the course of the season, uh, the disconnect that really was was there in the locker room in terms of adjustments, game plans. And you saw really in the second half of the season, the players took the onus of putting it on themselves and trying to right this ship. And they did. Listen, they, they, they won games. They got into the playoffs. They didn't have to play um, you know, in the eighth seed. So you're able to dictate your future in that way. But they, they wanted to be in a position where you're fighting for home court advantage. And uh, post in season tournament, they win the in season tournament, right? They go 10, uh, they, uh, 10 losses in 13 games. And that stretch really derailed their season in terms of them having ownership on their future. So that, that is the case with Darvin Ham. As far as LeBron James, that's a much bigger thing. Mm. I know. And I saw a tweet from Magic Johnson earlier today. Here, here's, here's, uh, here's Magic's tweet Laker Nation, we have a problem. All the good teams in the West are young and talented. The Nuggets, the Timberwolves, the Thunder, and the Mavericks. And the biggest elephant in the room is the Spurs, who with Victor Wembanyama will definitely be a playoff team next season. For the Lakers to compete with all these teams, the roster caps, all caps, must improve. It makes me feel like LeBron last night, the setup was when, when asked, and we'll play it for you again for those of you that are just getting with us. Um, LeBron was asked, was this his last game as a Laker? Alex, why don't you let it play for itself? I don't, I don't want to overstate it. Tonight, was there any thought at all that, you know, this could have been your last game with the Lakers? Um, I'm not going to answer that. Appreciate it. That smirk and that answer, that leads me to think that Magic Johnson – <laughs> is saying to everybody, um, you got all these young superstars, SGA, Anthony Edwards, Luca, Wemby. You got all these young superstars. And then you got 40-year-old LeBron. And he had an amazing season. And the Lakers are still only a seventh-place team. And he can't beat these young guys anymore. So... I almost feel like we're getting the uh, precursor from magic as if to say, don't be surprised if it's time for the Lakers to start thinking about what do you do? You got to get younger and you got to build for the future. But I think Browner will agree with this, that the Lakers are going to bend over backwards to do everything they can to keep them. Absolutely. I tend everything. to agree. I tend to agree. Absolutely. Really too. Cause if you read Shams, Shams is right up uh, on the athletic, he had this to say, about my nightmare coming true. Uh, what's more, team sources say the Lakers are very open to the prospect of helping LeBron fulfill his dream of playing with his son, Bronny, by potentially drafting him. 
the rest is really not important after that. So, but you okay? But look around it. There, there have been examples of this in the NBA. Not the Sun version of it, but look at Giannis's brother. He had two of his brothers on the team. They're not good NBA basketball players. Bronny, for for whatever people may think of him, not prepared. Whatever the case may be, he's better than the Nassis, the guy who's on the Bucks, pumping his fist and getting minutes. Like he's better than him. And so the Bucks have made an investment to make Giannis happy by keeping his brother on the roster. The Lakers can easily do the same for LeBron because Bronny may be a good developmental player. Now, how they use him, I don't under, I don't know. But he. How he about can, when they send it? How about when they send him to the G League and LeBron's not happy about that? He, no, I said I want to play with him. I didn't say I want him to be in the organization and play in the minor leagues. I said I wanted him on the floor. D'Angelo, go sit. Bronny, get your ass out here. Pops, coach him up, then. Pops, coach him up. Coach him up if you don't want him down in the G. I guess I got to do. I said this already, but I'll I'll say it again just in case it was missed. And if this is a rugby thing, go for it. And I'm not exaggerating. If the Lakers draft Bronny, I'm done. <laughs> I'm out. Hot take. Hot uh, take. It's not a take. It's not a take. It's got when when Browner was gone. You remember my admission? I didn't even watch this year. Yeah. You know me. Well, I got to watch Bronny. But wait a second. Hold on. But wait a second. Please. Browner also well, good. But Browner also told us. Please. Browner told us. The question that, is the most. That question just made me mad. Like, actually, I wasn't mad until you just asked that question. You know he's not good. You know he's not good. The dude averaged four points at USC. That right. question just actually pissed me off because you know <laughs> now you're just messing with me. Right. And now the other thing, the other thing that Browner said is that he's better than than uh, than Giannis's brother. He like, is. Well, how do we know? Because all we saw was one year of college basketball where he was very mediocre on a very mediocre team. He wasn't the best player on a bad team. He was he was the fifth best player on a very mediocre team. Come on, man. The Nassus is on the Shaq and the Fool All Stars. He might be the Shaq and the Fool MVP. Okay, y'all ain't watched the Nassus. Uh, no, I see, no, I seen him. No, I see him. watched the Nassus. Bro Bronny can't be worse than the Nassus. Can't be. Not possible. Can't be. I mean, anything's possible, mm -hmm. but not likely. Not well, likely. well, all yeah. I, all and uh, by the way, it's not out of the ordinary. It, it wouldn't be. Um, out of the Lakers repertoire to do it. I mean, because if I'm not mistaken, I believe the Nassus was a Laker first before he was a Buck. If I'm, three, and I think they were trying to. Oh yeah, there was one at Tedekumpo they were trying to lure Giannis with. And right. That dude After was, when they signed. Yeah. Okay. Awful. I don't remember who that was. Yeah. Awful. Awful. Yeah. Yeah. Cut it out. Some well, Nassus was a Laker. Some Nassus. <laughs> well, you say asses? you say that if they draft Bronny, you're out. Um, yeah, Browner said done. that if the Bears got rid of like Justin done with Fields, the he's out. Oh, out. That's not, okay. It's done. That that sounds like a crazy statement from him. But for people, let me let me let me. I'll explain this to y'all. Okay, he only watches the Lakers. So technically, if he's done with the Lakers, he is done with the NBA because he only watches the Lakers. So for him mm -hmm. to say he's done with the NBA is not as heavy of a statement as it sounds when you hear it. Just know he only watches the Lakers and he has con he has confessed to barely watching them. Yeah. Although, you know what's very oh, fascinating more. about my brain right now? I uh -huh. think the Nuggets Wolf series might be some of the best basketball we we're, we're, I, we're ever dude, about to watch. Dude, I, I can't wait like, for that. Like I actually think I'm Woo. that series. Like I right. think I might because listen, they did it to the Lakers and it sucked. But what Jamal Murray did every fourth quarter of the Lakers was impressive. Yes. And watching Nikola Jokic, that is a video game, basically. Like, the, the things he does, you can't even do on 2K. You can't shoot the way he does on 2K. 20, 20, and 12. And to see what Anthony Edwards has turned into, <laughs> right? That that's like Dude, turn into television. Turn into, he's 22 years old. Let me tell you something. Um, If the NFL gave me a Super Bowl that was Denver versus Minnesota, I'd be like, well, I don't care. It's, it's the Super Bowl. The NBA is giving me Minnesota against Denver which under normal circumstances I probably wouldn't care about because it's the same thing with baseball. Like if, if you told me that it was the Minnesota Twins against the Colorado Rockies, I'd I'm be out. like, no interest. But I'm now out. that the superstars, the way they play, you give me Minnesota Denver in the NBA, as a, as a football fan who will watch any NFL football game on Thursday night if Jacksonville's playing Carolina, I will watch. Okay, But as an NBA fan, I have been a Laker 
observer. That's the way I watch the NBA. So it's Lakers versus whoever they're playing. But Minnesota Denver to me, like yeah. I will make it my on I mean, my calendar on Saturday. Where yeah. by the way, my daughter's graduating from college this weekend in Boise, Idaho. I will be in Boise. Um, she and I will get done with the graduation. I'll be like, where are we going to watch Minnesota Denver? That's the game I want to go watch. Dude, it's kind of like the Bills. Bengals from four years ago. Four years ago, I'd be like, I'm not watching that game. I'm not watching Andy Dalton against Tyrod Taylor. Like, that sounds terrible. But now you're like, now. I'll watch Bengals Bills anytime. Anytime you got Bengals Bills on the TV, I'm in. It's the same thing. Like four years ago, Nuggets Wolves, I'm good. I don't want to watch that. No, thank you. Now that's like must watch basketball for real. It's that okay. entertaining. And for the one person who has a beef with somebody else, who has beef with no one? Jokic and Rudy Gobert don't like each other. For whatever reason, they have a history of going back and forth. And Jokic is not a big trash talker. You know about the he, Serbian French war? You know about the I guess history not. between Serbia yeah, and I don't, I don't know the I don't know the world I guess history. Not. You'll have to I guess excuse not. me. Yeah. I mean, I don't know anything Jokic, about world history. Jokic want all that smoke with Gobert. This might be this might be he go for 50 multiple times because he just doesn't like him. But the Wolves. The Wolves, their defense is by far the best in the league. I, this is going to be a dog fight. I can't wait. Well, that's just wait. it. Is it is it you know for everybody that thinks that the the uh, the Lakers just got you know steamrolled, they really didn't get steamrolled. Yeah, they lost they four to one, but they were all competitive games except they lost really two games at the last second. Right. Um, but I will just say this: Minnesota, Denver. I don't think that's just some automatic to Denver. No. I don't think I don't think so at all. Hey, let me have one minute here. I want to get to this Anthony Davis sound, but real quick. I spoke to Chase Fisher, who is the CEO and the owner of Blender's Eyewear. And Chase is going to come on the show tomorrow. Alex and I originally wanted to get Chase on the show because, you know, they've got so much going on with F1 and this Oracle Red Bull racing team. And they've got these blenders that are the uh, racing glasses. But um, I thought maybe Chase was going to Miami for the Grand Prix for the F1 race. He's not. Um, too much going on. But I said, dude, I still want you to come on. I still would like to talk to you about Blenders and the relationship to F1 number. That, that'd be the first thing. The second thing is Blenders in San Diego State. You know, he put that that deal together for NIL money going into the NCAA tournament. He raised, I want to say, I think it was like $75,000, something like that. He walks into the locker room, and I'm exaggerating, but he walks into the San Diego State basketball locker room like, hey, here's 10 grand for you. Here's 10 grand for you. Here's 10 grand for you. Like he's Oprah giving away cars, right? And now all these San Diego State basketball players are bouncing. In fact, Alex, while we're talking about blenders, show everybody the uh, list of San Diego State basketball players that are either headed towards the NBA, uh, going into their senior year, or leaving. Take a look at this. We all talked about this yesterday. Lamont Butler going to Kentucky. Micah Parrish going to Ohio State. Jaden Ladee, presumably to the NBA. Darian Trammell is going to be a senior. Jay Powell will be a senior. And Elijah Saunders, isn't he only a sophomore? Or is he going to be a sophomore? He, He's going to be a junior. Okay, he's going into the portal. It just pisses me off, man, that that San Diego State has built this program the way it has, and the community has stepped up to support it the way it has, and these guys are all bouncing for bigger and better deals elsewhere. But that's college sports now, and I'm an old guy for, for feeling that way. But these blenders, dude, these things are rad. Take a look at my new blenders. Come on. By the way, Tramel and Pal are not seniors. They've, they've seniored out. As well, seniored out. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yes. Clarification. Yeah. Um, but by the way, that's why it's important for companies like Blenders to try and help the program. We all know that San Diego State is at a disadvantage when it comes to monetary financial ability to give to kids. So anything that we can do to support the program, you just try and support the program. The Mace Foundation buying Blenders because that is where San Diego State is at a deficit. It's not facilities. It's not recognition. It's not ability or or what they've done. It is money. Yep. Yep. And it's not even the, it's not even the conference anymore. It used to be the conference holding them back. Not anymore. You know, I mean, I'm not saying the conference is, is putting guys into the final four of a year hardly, but they're putting a ton of teams into the tournament. So the conference is that much better now. Uh, mm -hmm. These blenders are amazing because they're fashionable. They're uh, the, the lenses are polarized. They're super inexpensive compared to other name brand uh, glasses. You you have five, six pairs of these things rather than just one pair of Ray-Bans that you break or you lose and then you're furious. So check them out, blenderseyewear.com and Chase Fisher, the owner, CEO and founder will be with us tomorrow. Shout out. Shout out is right. Um, use our code Kaplan, by the way, and you'll save 20%. I should have mentioned that. That's probably the most important part of all of this. <laughs> use our code Kaplan and you'll it's save 20%. Online. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Anthony Davis, let, let's just talk about him for a quick second. When he got hit last night by Michael Porter Jr. and he flopped around on the ground, I was like, what the hell happened? Like, I understand like somebody bumps into you and it might hurt. But the way he went down, look, I, I'm not him. I'm not in his body, okay? But come on. Everybody watching, nine out of ten people are going to watch that and go, how could he be that hurt? How could he be flopping around down on the court? How could he be face down? How could he miss time from, from that little shot? It just didn't seem that bad. And then it completely impacted his game the rest of the way. So I'd be curious, Alex, did he have anything to say after the game? Anything pertaining yeah. to this? Just knowing, you know, obviously I was just in a, you know, rhythm offensively, but um, it's an important game. You know, you want to be out there and it's, you know, I was just very limited <clears throat> with the shoulder. Um, but still try to go out there and just, you know, leave it on the floor for my team. But uh, it's definitely frustrating. Um, just kind of been our our thing all year. Um, you know, Seawood, Vando, uh, Gabe, uh, you know, we're not making any excuses or anything like that. You know, Denver's a hell of a team. You know, our defending champs. Um, it's just tough. Uh, you know, just going out like that. I mean, I give the guy credit for getting back into the game. I do. I give him credit for showing heart and showing toughness. But, you know, him talking about all the other guys that are hurt all year, and he had this incredible year, played more games than he's ever played in any season of his entire career. But for, for two games ago, him to come out and rip his coach and rip all of his teammates, we don't know what we're doing on either end of the floor. And then for him to get hurt in the most critical game and not really be able to contribute anything offensively in particular, it just kind of speaks to to the problem that th that there always is with him. One day he's complaining and crying about not being the defensive player of the year, and Jamal Murray goes over him for a game winning shot. And now in the most critical game of the entire season, when you really need him, he's hurt again. God, he irritates me. Charles Barkley's fault. Come it's on, Charles man. Barkley's fault. Come on, you don't man. call that guy street clothes. You don't give him that nickname. He probably sits the second half, and then it's not four against five. Because yesterday was four against five, the second half. All right, Brown, I know you got a lot more to say. Stick around. This is Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studio, sevenmilecasino.com. We'll wrap this up. Let's start talking about the Padres next. This is Kaplan and crew. Hey, great friends. A uh, little time out here and just a quick word about prize picks because. They are a really, really, really important sponsor. And I, I always tell you guys this stuff straight up, okay? Like, when they came to me and said, we want to sponsor the show, the reason that they did is because we were having so much success in LA. Like, but you have this great audience in San Diego also. Why don't we use, why don't we use the, the podcast? It's great, wonderful. They signed a deal with us that was January through the end of uh, the basketball season, the end of the NBA Finals. Then in July, they kind of take a month off and then they come back in August. My goal from the beginning was to get them all the way to June because they do have a cancellation, like a 30 day cancellation. Why am I telling you all of this? You're probably like, what the hell are you telling me this shit for? The reason is, is because when they told me about a month ago, Hey, um, downloads have, have stopped. You guys are not getting as many downloads as you once were. I was like, Oh, I'm going to tell everybody the real truth. The truth is we were killing it. Then all of a sudden, probably a lot of you guys already downloaded prize picks. And then some of you just, you know, didn't ever do it. If you've not downloaded prize picks, you got to help the show, man. Download prize picks, use our code great friends, get in the game. It's me, Grande Brown, man, 3 million other people all over the place, all loving this game. It's so easy to play. You pick two players, could be more. You decide more or less. You fill out that roster on prize picks. Today's Taco Tuesday. There's all kinds of deals. And let's all win. Let's all win together. And then share your prize picks with me on Twitter, and I'll play your prize picks. Download the Prize Picks app. Use our code Great Friends. We would really sincerely appreciate it. Get in the game with Prize Picks. Let's get back to the show. Hey, great friends on a Tuesday afternoon, along with Grande and the Brown Man from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. 
This is Kaplan and Cruz. So we've talked a lot today so far about NBA playoffs, Lakers losing, what happens to the Lakers, LeBron, Darvin Ham, Anthony Davis. We talked a lot about basketball to get things going. I said I wanted to turn into some baseball, which we will in a matter of moments. And also, a quick heads up, on the way, Brittany Erton is talking about the show. Now, for those of you that have been with us for a long time, you know who Brittany is. Brittany is the uh, host of NBC's coverage of the Triple Crown. You've got the Kentucky Derby coming up this Saturday. I'll be honest with you guys in advance. I don't know anything about what's going on in the Kentucky Derby. Like Horses. I, I, that, okay, you know what? Check that. I know that there's horses racing in the Kentucky Derby. You know and where? I know, it's, I know it's at Churchill Downs in mm -hmm. Louisville. Now you I know, know two time, things. You know what time? You know what day? I know, I know it's Saturday. I know there's a party here locally. Oh yeah, where's the party? Is the party at Monarch? Yeah, in Del Mar. Okay, we need to get the, we need to get somebody from that party on this show. Well, we have in the past. We've had the owner. Uh, let's do it. On. Let's do it again because I need to make sure my tickets are secure. Okay, you want to go? You you want to go to the game or go oh, to the yeah. party on Saturday? Yeah, you know I do. This weekend, man, I uh, I'm I'm out on every all the festivities, you know, because um, you out of town. I know my daughter's graduating college. I. I can't believe it, man. I'm talking to a lot of friends of mine. I, a buddy of mine was in LA last night and I'm like, Hey, are you going to be in LA for a couple of days? I'd love to see you. He's like, no, man, I'm leaving. I'm going up to Ann Arbor. My kid's graduating college up at Michigan. I'm like, Oh, that's interesting. I'm headed to Boise. My daughter's graduating college there. Um, man, the school year is like over and kids are graduating. And then like my daughter who's down at Tulane was sending me videos last night as the protests were taking over campus, man, it's crazy. It is crazy what's going on at college campuses. And I would just love to say one quick little political comment to all of our 19 and 20 and 20 year old little friends who say things like, we're They're not little. leaving. Yeah. We're not leaving until our demands are met. Okay. Stick around. Go ahead. Get your tent, sit on the lawn and wait. Cause got news for you. And you'll know this when you're 50, that when you're 50 and there's lots of money on the line and you're a professional in business, um, you don't take orders from 21 year old kids with tents on lawns, um, especially when there's big money on the line. So go ahead, sit on the lawn, have a good time. Oh, and by the way, after finals, when classes are over and your mom and dad are like, Hey, are you coming home for the summer? You're like, yeah, I'm going to, let me just pack up my tent here and just go back to the dorms and get my water jug and I'll, I'll be home on the next flight, mom and dad. Yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead. You guys do your thing. Anyway, I just want to say that. Uh, cause I get worried, man. Like my daughter down at Tulane, she shot me, she shot these videos last night and she showed them to me. I'm like, girl, I may get you out of there before his finals are even over. And then the buildings are locked up. You can't buildings are like, Oh, we have to close this building. Arrests are happening on campus. Cops on horses, man. It's, it's crazy what's going on in college campuses right now. So, all right. Um, let me get back to it. Let me get back to it. Are we, you guys think we're done with basketball? Are we done? Are we good. You guys, any I'm more good on the bone. Good for like months. <laughs> you're done, huh? be done this might be good permanently according to him mm -hmm. let's go Bronny. Seven. i'm really pick. not doing it for effect i'm just telling you guys if they do that and you all start talking lakers i'm gonna do the browner just you mean like what browner does when you talk f1 or what browner yep. does when you talk i'm out soccer? i would i'm not I'm, I'm just i'm not doing it for effect like i'm already pre-mad I can't uh -huh. imagine how mad I'm actually going to be. Warm so let me just draft. so make your declaration. Your declaration is that if Bronny James is drafted by the win. Lakers, win. But yeah. but let's just play it out. But if but you're saying that if Bronny James is drafted by the Lakers, yeah, and they do that not to get their team better, they do that LeBron. simply to appease LeBron. Right. That you are out on the Lakers <laughs> until LeBron's out. Yeah. Yeah. So hypothetically, LeBron leaves. He retires, but Bronny, but Bronny is still on the team. Are you good? Are you coming back? He won't be on the team if LeBron's not on the team. Got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who? What? Hey, man, listen. I'm telling y'all one more time. I'm telling y'all one more time. Buckle up for a very familiar picture next year. The only new person in the team photo might be Bronny James. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, okay. you gotta. Darvin Ham won't be there either. There'll be a new coach. Okay, uh, okay. Again, Jeannie Bus is broke, fam. She can't. The next coach won't be won't be anywhere near what you already got. They probably they good. They are they not they not still paying him because he he got a job. No, they got to pay him two more years. So they got to pay Darvin Ham two more years. They got off the hook 
with the guy who's now coaching the son, Frank Vogel, because mm-hmm. now somebody else is going to be paying him to not coach. So you're going to be paying two people not to – one guy not to coach and another guy five to seven million yeah. to basically listen to LeBron so people can then be mad and have somebody to point at just, first. Arvin Ham will get just, another job. He'll, they'll get off the hook too. Just just so you know, you say that they're broke. And, in, and, and, and maybe Jeannie Buss is broke when it comes to – NBA the, broke. Okay, but hold on. But Stan Kroenke owns the Nuggets. Jeannie Rich. Buss owns the Lakers. Stan Kroenke's Rams are rich. Dean Spanos' his Chargers, they kind of look rich because they're getting a new facility built, but it's not theirs. They don't own it. They didn't build it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think Mark Davis has proven to you that you don't have to be independently billionaire wealthy to have NFL wealth. And I'll just say this. Jeannie Buss and the Lakers have NBA wealth. If they want to fire a coach who's making three, four, five million dollars a year for the next two years, and Alex is right, somebody will hire him as an assistant and they'll bite into that number. And she has to hire somebody else at six, seven, eight million who's actually got the credentials. They can easily do that because they when don't you, spend a lot of money in other places that other organizations do. They can easily pull that off. So when you say the new coach is going to cost five to seven million, that's not the other six guys that are going to be on his staff. That, that no, the no, coaching I, I understand. Number is always Browner, what are you talking about, I, dude? Man. I understand, man. But we're Come talking on, about dude. the Lakers. <laughs> we're not. We're not talking about the Orlando Magic. We're not talking about the Oklahoma City Thunder. We're still Who, talking about the Lakers. Whose owner is richer? Both those teams, their owners are richer than Jenny Buss. Owner, perhaps, organization, what they make per year, that that might be a different story. All I'm saying to you is this: I don't really know Jeannie's finances, and I don't know the Lakers' finances. You apparently do. Um, so I, I, I'm just going to disagree. I, I think the Lakers can afford to make their changes. Good luck. See you Thank next me. year, Darvin. See you next hey, maybe, year, Darvin. Maybe he'll maybe he'll be coaching the G League team. Maybe he'll be coaching the South Bay Lakers. They're going to have to pay him to do some. Yeah. Don't let him go. Don't let him just go to the beach with your money, Jeannie. Hey, remember when um, when the uh, people, the librarians of Los Angeles made fun of the Padres oh, fans yeah. because of the swag chain? Like, ooh, right. ooh, we celebrate in June with our swag chain. Um, that's kind of like the mayor of L.A. sending out tweets about how proud she is of the Lakers. Uh, Miss Mayor Bass, girlfriend, you, you should not, you should not be sending out tweets that say this tough season, but at least we won the in-season tournament proud of our team girl, the in-season tournament don't mean Jack squat. And honestly, you really shouldn't be too proud of what this team did not accomplish this year. That's a, that's a bad tweet. Miss mayor. Just want to put that out. Are you telling her to stick to politics? Oh, <laughs> shut, much, up and, shut up and shut politi- up in politic. <laughs> shut up and legislate. Yeah. <laughs> shut up and bill pass. Yeah. <laughs> How about shut up and clean up the streets of downtown LA? I knew that was coming. I was I like, mean, someone's going to say something about homelessness. Right come now. on, man. Yeah. Yikes. Why not? Why not? All right. Uh, let me say this just as we uh, transition. I want to say uh, thank you to our friends at Tory Holistics and California Holistics and Oxnard Holistics. And here's why. You know that our friend Ruthie Edelson, who was the chief marketing officer of Tory for years, uh, Ruthie had left. She went on to start her own business. They hired a guy named Charlie Rolfs. Charlie was great, but Charlie has decided to move on to something else in his career. Guess what? Tory and California and Oxnard, Doug, Tony, the owners, they were smart enough to say, we got to get Ruthie back. Ruthie is back. So if you are going by Tory Holistics, and you, hey, I want to just give her a hug. I just want to say hello. Ask for Ruthie. Not that she's working down in the dispensary. She's upstairs in the executive offices. But Ruthie's back. And Alex, I talked to Ruthie yesterday, and we're going to get her back on the show this week to welcome her back. Gosh, we've missed her. Charlie was great, but we missed Ruthie. If you're going to buy cannabis products, pain, uh, uh, you know, sleep, anxiety, recreation, our partners are Tory Holistics, California Holistics, and Oxnard Holistics. When you spend $75 or more, you'll save 20% when you use our code Kaplan Crew. Wanted to just throw that out there for Ruthie. All right, let's switch over to the Padres because I don't know about you guys. You, t- you tell me how much time was spent last night on the Lakers, how much time was spent last night with the Padres. Go ahead, Alex. For me, I watch both. I watch both. I have Brown? multiple screens. Yeah, not me. Brown? It's too early. It's too early. I was watching the Lakers, but I did see that home run by the most exciting player in baseball. So, you know. 
I uh, I also will admit that I was watching the Lakers on TV, but I was watching the Padres on my phone. So big TV in a bar, restaurant with my girlfriend, Lakers, phone. It's wild that she lets you get away with that. If I were at dinner and I'd try to watch something on my phone, the look of Latin hate that would come my way. Come on, bro. Scary. Come on, That's bro. scarier than any horror movie Jordan Peele can ever make. Bro. You gotta yeah, get, you gotta control your situation, bro. What you mean? Don't well, don't, don't, don't don't try to come don't try to come down on my dog like that. If no, it was, pop, it was, it was if jealousy. Pop up on the it screen. Was, it was and jealousy. Do, and do this. <laughs> if big fella want to do this while he, he eating a salad, big fella could do that while he eating a salad. <laughs> Because he control the situation. I'm not cups mm -hmm. over. I support you, Scott. Watch whatever sport you want to watch at dinner. Actually, it's not me controlling don't the let, situation. Don't let, fellow, don't let him punk you in a not do a watch that game, Scott. No, no, here's he the deal. He, Browner never listens to me. No, he, he don't listen. He, he oh, doesn't listen to me you. at all. I heard you. I heard what you said. I heard what you said. Get control. <laughs> Get control. <laughs> I don't have control, Browner, just so you know. I don't have any control of the situation. Here's Get the control, deal. control, Alex. No, here's the deal. My girlfriend. Rachel loves sports. No, no, she doesn't love sports. She loves the Padres. No. She loves the Padres. Um, she doesn't love sports necessarily. She doesn't hate sports, but here's oh. just to, but just to give you an example, I said, look, Rach, let's go out to dinner. Uh, but I really got to, I got to watch the Laker game. So she said, okay, let's go to this particular restaurant and we'll go because they'll have multiple TVs. They'll have the Padre game and they'll have the Laker game. Okay. We go compromise. Right. You know what? It was Monday night and this place is closed on Monday nights. And we forget all the time that these guys close on Monday nights. It's uh, it's, it's like ridiculous. Chick-fil-A on Sunday. I always forget it's closed. Right. So so we go next door to the next place, which is plan B. We go in. Believe it or not, oh, th they what? got the Laker games on every TV. They Who didn't have the plan B. Say what? Who took a plan B? Me and Rachel. We went to the next restaurant. OK. What 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 I miss? What I miss, y'all? No, go ahead. What was plan B? I, did I miss what I miss? <laughs> He's making Only a pregnancy joke. A plan B? Yeah. I didn't I don't get the pregnancy joke. Okay, then my bad. My bad. Yeah. You know. What's the pregnancy joke? He's hit the e-brake so, real hard, dude. You yeah, dog. If you didn't get it, you gotta move on. Full stop. My bad, my bad. Full stop. Uh, no, he no, no, clearly no, okay. didn't get it. Okay, I didn't get yeah, it at all. That's on me. That's plan B me. is a contraceptive where if you have unprotected sex and you think you might get someone pregnant, you take a plan B and it and, and then you don't get pregnant. See, Brown, I don't have that problem. I got I got plan V. Mm -hmm. You I know, I, I got plan V, dog. You know, I don't get listen, nobody now, pregnant. Listen, show, I take full responsibility for what just happened. That's on me. Okay. I got to do better. Okay. Gotta you do, do got to do better. You were at a restaurant. You got to know your audience, dude. Yeah, I do. I heard it. I thought it was funny, but <laughs> when, when the man kept talking without acknowledging it, I just moved on. Yeah, you know? I didn't get it. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> so we go to plan B, the restaurant, not the contraceptive <laughs> device. Yeah. And, uh, every TV in the place is with, is Lakers, not Padres. So, um, the thing about my girlfriend is, is she knows that I, I got to see what's going on. I got to know what's happening. So we're in, involved in a full blown conversation because we're sitting at a bar and we're sitting next to each other. We're, we're having the conversation and I'm looking at her. I'm listening to her. I'm talking to her. Then I'm coming back up to the Laker game. Okay, fine. Then I check my phone a little bit. I see what's going on with the Padre game. Right back to her. So I, I mean, listen, I get it, Alex. If if you go out on date night and your and your wife doesn't want you watching the game on your phone, I get that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. this was a work night dinner. You know, mm -hmm. that's all. We got you. That's yeah. all it was. So um, as for the Padres. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing going on there. There's nothing going on there. There's, Bro, that I mean, was that was embarrassing last night. I'll tell you what. As someone that watched every pitch of that game, that was embarrassing last night. Jerks and Profar hits a leadoff home run. Well, not leadoff, but in the bottom of the first, he's hitting leadoff. He hits a home run, and then they don't get a hit until the ninth inning. Uh, like, they were getting one hit by this Nick Lodolo guy who struck mm -hmm. out 11, and they struck out 14 times last night. 14 times last night. That was an embarrassing offensive performance last night. I don't care what write-up or what Twitter's telling me about expected batting average and how hard they're hitting the – bro, they struck out 14 times. And if my math is right, I think there's only 27 outs in a game. So mm -hmm. uh, not very good. 
No, not and then, very good. And that's five losses in a row. Right. And and I'm and, and I'm not overreacting. I'm just telling you right now that was embarrassing last night. Last and, night. And and at home, you know, you get swept by Philadelphia, and Philly's a good team. And here comes Cincinnati. And as Browner points out, they may have the most exciting player. They have got the guy right now oh. that Fernando oh. Tatis was three years ago. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, whoa. you're raising your hand like we're in class. Yeah, What's up? I just really rem- celebrating just- some. Yeah, yeah, I, I just was going to sidetrack full stop this conversation again, but then I stopped myself. Oh, <laughs> Plan B? Now, no. I'm curious. No, just it was another example of why people love bobbleheads. Last night was a giveaway, not sold out, because it wasn't a bobblehead. It was a beanie night. People didn't show up, and you can wear that one, Browner. And you always talk about, you, can do, you can't wear no bobblehead. You can wear a beanie. And it was 30,000 people there last night. But when Joe Musgrove bobblehead pops up this week, I bet you'll be a sellout. What day is it? What, what day is it? What I'll day is it? Up. I'll look it up. Sorry Here's for the, the thing. full stop. Here's the thing. Um, you know, you're the home crowd, and you have shown up at Petco Park over the last two plus seasons. Like, like Petco Park in its 20 year like history never has before. never had like never before. Ever. And honestly, you look at the record of the Padres at home versus the Padres record away. They play better. They're actually a winning team on the road. They're a terrible team at home. They're six and twelve at home. Six and twelve <laughs> on the road. They're eight That's and six. Crazy. That's crazy. It is crazy. And you know, you take a look around yesterday, Alex. You, you had a what I thought was a legendary rant yesterday, where you were like, "I'm going to explain to you why the Padres stink right now." It's really, really simple. Yeah. You put up the numbers right now for the past week on Machado, Tatis, and Bogarts. Put them up on the screen for everybody. Let everybody see this. By the way, themselves. yeah. Since Browner wanted to give AJ Preller flowers. Oh yeah. Why do we keep marking it with that? <laughs> because that's when the mark happened. Because at the that. time, you, you the flowers were like, look how things are good. Look how good things are going. Right. Look at this week that Machado, Tatis, and Bogarts have had. Go ahead, Alex. A combined three RBIs between the three of them. A combined zero home runs between the three of them. A combined twenty strikeouts to two walks. And the batting averages are all whatever. So and then also the team went one and bad. six. The team went one and six. The team, it's not just them, by the way. The pitching's been awful. It was six, six, two air as a team, which is the 27th worst. And the team batting average against is 284, which is 26. So they're just getting hammered and they're not hitting. So y'all off the bus or what? Y'all off? Well, I'll tell you this. I'm not giving anybody any flowers in April. That's all. Again, same same thing I said to y'all yesterday, man. By the way, don't you I hate get, Valentine's man. Day? Why are you trying to hand out flowers, bro? Like you're anti Mother's Day, you're anti Valentine's Day, but you're 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 pro flowers. I am pro con- congratulatory, sir. Okay, and if the term that the kids like to use is give someone their flowers, I'm using the term so that people can understand. I'm speaking the language of the youth, sir. That's mm. why I use that term. I'm mm-hmm. I'm wildly against flowers. Okay. Because gotcha. if a man does something good, they're not people lining up giving him flowers. That's why I'm against flowers, sir. If it can't be done both ways, then I don't want to hear it. Mm. You're just pro AJ Preller flowers. I'm pro celebration. So I'm pro celebrating success. I'm pro mm. patting What's folks success? on the back when they've done well. Jackson Merrill is success. Okay. Dylan Cease is success, sir. What do I need to keep going? Wait, you've given us two examples of a guy who made the team as a rookie and is your starting center fielder and got off to a nice start. And then, mm-hmm. of course, you know, things usually even out, right? Bad and then, 300 anymore. Yeah. And then Dylan Cease, who, it's listen, more. I'm 301, 301. Like 301. He batting 301. Who is Dylan Cease? I'm not sorry, not Dylan Cease. Jackson Merrill batting 301. Jackson Merrill's in 292. Boy. Now, let me check my statistics. Boy, on that. Nerd, I'm just nerd, telling you right nerds, now, man. The nerds are going to come out. Hold on. And guess second. what? Guess what he's hit since you started handing out flowers? 143. That's all right. Oh, oh. 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 you oh. just got dirted. Oh. Oh. oh, oh. He's hitting 301, sir. Oh. Oh. And he's not even hitting 301. Oh. 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 301, oh. sir. 301. Oh. What's his war, sir? <laughs> What's his war? Oh, hell no. Nah. Damn. Hell to the nah. Damn. Took He's out the nerd, nerd goggles bro. all up on a brother. You gonna uh. come after me like that, bro? You cold for that. <laughs> yeah, bro. Hey, when do we start giving AJ Preller for uh, flowers for his Juan Soto trade? Y'all see what CJ Abrams doing this year? 
Tell it's me. not good. It's not, not a good look. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> he's hitting 300. <laughs> and he's got seven home runs. Mm. Yeah. I'll tell you what is a good look. Life brew coffee. Look How's at that? Browner. Look at Browner desperately hey. trying to oh, find research. stats right now, okay. dude. Oh, research. Dude, he's All right, got I'm weak it. old stats. Yeah, I'm making this real quick. Life brew coffee. Lifebrew.com. L-Y-F-E. Lifebrew.com. Mushroom coffee. Mushrooms to restore balance and increase energy levels and stamina. Mushrooms that support memory, focus, and nerve regeneration amongst a variety of other health benefits from natural mushrooms. Go to Lifebrew, L-Y-F-E, lifebrew.com, and now you save 30% on Lifebrew. Click that QR code that's on the screen, or those of you listening on audio or radio, make sure you go to Life, L-Y-F-E, lifebrew.com. All right, stick around. Brittany Erton is on the way. This is Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Hey, great friends. What's going on? Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. Okay, so look, today's only Tuesday, right? Uh, but this upcoming Saturday is the Kentucky Derby, which for me in my life is usually a really big deal. It just so happens that my daughter's graduating college this Saturday. So rather than being at a party or, you know, I love going to the actual Derby, I'm going to be focused in on, on family and, and a college graduation. But the reason I mention all of this is because um, by, back by popular demand, you guys send me messages every year, get Brittany Erton back on the show. So here she is, just landed, literally just landed in Louisville, where she's going to be hosting all the coverage on NBC for the Derby this upcoming Saturday. Brittany Erton returns to Kaplan and crew as we broadcast from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Hi, Brittany. Hello, hello. Gosh, I feel like it's been a bit. Uh, first and foremost, congratulations to your daughter. That's incredible. Are you going to be having your phone on the Kentucky Derby, though, as like she's walking to, <laughs> you know, get her diploma? <laughs> Tell me this. What time is the Derby on Saturday? Well, we know post times, right? Are they going to? I mean, it's going to get too dark. I think it's at 647 p.m., but let me triple check that. I've got okay. my show schedule, but the actual post time, 657, 657. Great. So that's 657 Eastern time, right? So that is uh, 457 in Boise, Idaho. And the graduation starts at two. Oh, I'm easily going to be able to watch the Kentucky Derby. You're fine. Well, is it a general, is it like a general graduation? Because sometimes those are really long. Mine was Good like point. five hours long, but I was Good also point. a communications major, so. Yeah. Sometimes, people, sometimes college people, graduations yeah. go really long. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I yeah. feel like there's, I feel like it's broken up into different things. So I, I don't feel okay. like it's going to be that long. So, so Brittany, tell us, um, you, you literally just got to Louisville. Is that right? I literally just landed maybe 30 minutes ago, made my way to the hotel, trying to get everything organized, picked up three different hat boxes, put up my dresses, uh, now talking to you guys. So I feel like I'm I'm appropriately dressed, you know, walked into the Louisville airport. They've got horses everywhere, bands playing. Uh, it's fun. It's really, really fun. And it's Kentucky Derby 150. I mean, give me another event that has, you know, been around for that long. You you will not find one consistently. Yeah. When you wow. arrive at... When you arrive at something like this, what's the first thing you want to do to kind of just uh, get yourself grounded in the event? Because every every place has a, a number one go to for people who cover things mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. What's the number mm -hmm. one thing when you land that you want to get to? Jeff Ruby's. Hey, <laughs> you didn't tell me to say that, but honestly, I feel like Tuesday night, Jeff Ruby's Steakhouse is always somewhere that I go to with Nick Luck, my colleague, and we just kind of decompress. We catch up because it's been a while since we've seen each other. We talk about the race. You often see a lot of people that are in racing, so that kind of helps your mind really get wrapped around the other contenders, and maybe I've got to schedule a couple of interviews, and I happen to run into someone. Um, I feel like it slowly eases me into the week. It's, it's a lot of fun, but we'll see. It's a difficult reservation to get. <laughs> do, well, I mean, do you not have it? I mean, doesn't somebody at NBC make these reservations for you? No, we got to make our own. Come on. How's the, for steak? how's the steak? Most importantly, how's the steak? 
delicious. Come on. I mean, if it's okay. Jeff Ruby's okay. Steakhouse, it's got to be really good. He's getting a lot of free promotion right now. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the uh, NBC broadcast of the Kentucky Derby. Like, just go through, like, is Mike Tirico part of it? Is Bob Costas still a part of it? Like, like who do you get to work with as, as you've gone from, you know, local Southern California, Santa Anita, Del Mar, TVG, to as your career has evolved, to now where you're this much a part of NBC. I think she I feel really lucky. I mean, my very first Kentucky Derby was in 2018. Justify won the Kentucky Derby and then won the eventual triple crown. So that was pretty remarkable to be a part of as my very first Kentucky Derby. And then I get to work with legends of the sport, right? Legends of broadcasting. And Mike Tirico, yes, he will be here. Ahmed Fareed will be here. Rebecca Lowe, who if anyone is a Premier League fan will absolutely know her. Kenny Rice, who is the ultimate storyteller. Honestly, nobody is better. It actually makes it difficult going into our meetings and hearing his stories and then having to relay yours because they're never as good. Mm -hmm. uh, Nick Luck, amazing. Um, Donna Brothers, obviously she's been with the broadcast team for the longest in terms of NBC. Randy Moss, Jerry Bailey, uh, the whole team. So I'm really, really excited um, to just be a part of it and work with such talented people in front of and behind the camera. It's uh, funny you mentioned Randy Moss. Randy Moss is one of, you know, there was a story not long ago. Um, Randy Moss went on a radio show, I think on WFAN in New York, and they thought they were talking to Randy Moss of ESPN, the former yes. NFL wide receiver. Yeah. And they were talking to Randy Moss, the, the bald guy who's really known more for his horse racing. And I've, I've um, been with Randy Moss, that Randy Moss, many times yeah. covering it because he used to work for the NFL Network. Um, and I would be doing like NFL games for Westwood One. And he and I would always meet up in the media room and have, we were like the only two people that talked horse racing, you mm -hmm. know? So, so it was always a nice uh, thing to get to visit with him. But um, he, that's, that's, a, that's a great broadcast team for the Triple Crown on NBC. And it's so awesome that you get to be a part of all that. And you say you brought your hats. Is this something from your own personal collection or do they say to you, hey, we're going to dress you? Like explain how the, the hats for the broadcast work. Uh, well, I am lucky enough to have worked with multiple milliners over the past few years or whatnot between covering Triple Crown and also Royal Ascot, which is in England. So I source my hats from England. I have three very talented milliners. I give them a shout out. Jane Taylor. Um, I also have Emily London that's been helping me out and Justine Bradley. So I have to decide between those three in terms of weather, outfit, all of the above. But I do it myself. And it's the least favorite thing for me to do in terms of uh, this weekend because it's so difficult. I never know what I'm going to wear until the end. And then we've got possible rain coming in. So that completely throws you for a loop. I was going to ask, is the race day? Because I've seen like some muddy Kentucky derbies in the past. That doesn't look fun. Is it going to rain on Saturday? Is that the schedule? About 60% chance on Friday, about 40% chance on Saturday. I am no weather woman. We will have Dylan Dreyer from the Today Show who will be handling all of that. So I'm hoping we get a, a good forecast. Um, but when you're talking about contenders, some of these horses love the off race track. So it will benefit them. It just won't benefit my shoes. <laughs> well, it's funny because when it rains there, it's not. I mean, listen, we've experienced a lot of rain in Southern California in the last couple of years. Um, and some of it has been like torrential and you're like, and mudslides and, you know, all kinds of problems that have been created. But boy, when it rains there it is a different kind of rain. I mean, it's big old heavy drops of rain and it floods it's like quickly. A mm -hmm. big time. You're exactly right. Uh, we're talking to Brittany Erton from the NBC coverage of the triple crown and from the Kentucky Derby, which is going to happen this Saturday. So I have to be totally honest. Okay. Um, okay. I don't know. I don't know anything about the race. So would you That's okay. Just, you have a graduation to go to. Yes. Right. Would you <laughs> would you give us your opinion on what you think we should be looking for in this race and maybe even perhaps like a long shot that you think mm -hmm. would be a fun play? Okay. So overarching, there are two main horses that everybody's talking about. One in particular, his name is Fierceness. He's the two-year-old champion from last year. He's owned by Mike Rapoli, trained by Todd Pletcher. If those names sound familiar, they had the Kentucky Derby favorite last year, who was scratched the morning of the race. So with this horse, if he runs to his last race, nobody's beating him. But here's the thing. He's incredibly inconsistent. Every other race is good. So he would be on the other pattern right now, meaning 
you know, that leaves the race completely wide open. A lot of people are also talking about Sierra Leone. This horse was purchased for $2.3 million. That horse is drawn to the inside. He runs at the back of the pack. I'm not a fan just because of that running style. A long shot I'm kind of zeroing in on. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I just wanted to ask you. So it's interesting. Fierceness, because I'm looking at it right now. He's mm -hmm. um, running from the 17 spot, okay? So mm -hmm. I, I think there is some data that says that horses that run from the outside gates don't really mm -hmm. do as well because they've got a longer way to go. And then the other horse that you just mentioned, Sierra Leone, is in the second spot. So again, kind of closer to the rail. So I I'm just wondering if if those positions mean anything to you. They absolutely do. But there's a long run into that first turn. And I actually think that horses out in the clear is probably where you want to be. So the stat with fierceness is post position 17, no horse has won the Kentucky Derby from that post position. We did recently get a scratch as of maybe about an hour ago. The number nine in Sino is out. Um, so we will have a 21 in the race again. That's epic ride. I'm not concerned about those stats for fierceness whatsoever. I think he's actually a lot better to be on the outside rather than a horse like Sierra Leone, who's post position two on the inside. You don't want to get stuck in behind horses. Fierceness is quick. He can be forwardly placed. Uh, he's got the running style and the talent absolutely to win. I'm just wondering with that running pattern, what we're going to see from him. My long shot, though, is a horse that's very lightly raced. His name is Just a Touch. He is post position eight for trainer Brad Cox and Florent Giroux. This horse has only run three times, but he has been very, very impressive in those three races. And I think you might get a bit of a price, 10 to one on the morning line. Okay. I was looking at um, two other horses um, that I'll, I'll just run by you. One is in the 12 spot, uh, Track mm -hmm. Phantom. And the mm -hmm. reason I even look at track phantom, because I know nothing about the horse. I know the trainer, Steve Asm Asmussen, right? But You're I know the jockey. Never, come on. You know a lot well, about racing. <laughs> I know, but but I haven't done my homework. Um, but I really, you know, Joel Rosario is one of my favorite jockeys. And I know, you know, when he left Del Mar to go to Saratoga, that was like, I, I, cause I always bet on Joel Rosario. Mm -hmm. So because I love Joel Rosario, what do you think about that horse and the possibility? So he would have been one of the top five horses prior to his most recent race. So we finished fourth in the Louisiana Derby. He went into the race as the favorite. Uh, the biggest question mark I have with him is the distance. Can he get a mile and a quarter? He has the pedigree to get a mile and a quarter, but he showed in that most recent race that he was flattening out a bit late. So my question mark with him would be, yeah, can he actually get the distance? Steve Asmussen, he's won over 10,000 races in North America. That's the most of any trainer. He's never won the Kentucky Derby. It would be big for him. Okay. And then the other one I just want to ask you about is the number four horse, Catching Freedom. Again, mm -hmm. I like to play jockeys, and I like to play jockeys that I know, the guys who race or have raced at Del Mar. Flavia and Pratt is one of my mm -hmm. also one of my favorites. So what do you think about Catching Freedom, the four horse? A lot of people like this horse. So I do not think you're going to get eight to one on catching freedom whatsoever. Mm -hmm. He would be the flip side of track phantom. He absolutely can get the distance. A mile and three sixteenths was that most recent race. You only add one more sixteenth to it. And that's a mile and a quarter. Uh, my only concern about this one is the running style. But Flavian Pratt has done very well in the Kentucky Derby. His win came via disqualification back in 2019. But I swear every horse he gets aboard, he puts them in the right spot. So I'm with you. But maybe we're biased being from California and loving Pratt. Right, right. We're talking to Brittany Erton, who's going to be part of the NBC coverage of the Kentucky Derby you, this upcoming Saturday on NBC. I have a broadcast question. The Kentucky Great. Derby brings out the celebrities, the stars, the randoms. I uh, remember the COVID year you interviewed Sean Payton. I think that I would think it was at the Derby and all I that. You got, I think you got COVID from mm -hmm. him that, right? Didn't yeah, you? like it was so. I had to quarantine for 17 days. Right. I don't think they were doing tests at that time. I felt okay, right. thank goodness. But yeah, that yeah. was. That was so, uh, is there any confirmed celebrities that you know you're going to be speaking to? Are the are the Swift Kelsey mania showing up to Kentucky? Oh boy. Or is it always just a surprise? Always just a surprise. Okay. I, I'm typically not the person that's interviewing the celebrities on Derby Day anyways. I'm interviewing the horses. I'm like on the back yeah. side, <laughs> uh, hanging out with them, which I'm totally okay with. But it's not guaranteed, but I would not be surprised in the slightest if Tom Brady was here again. Because he loves the Derby. He comes every year. And on top of that, he's good friends and business partners with Mike Rapoli, 
who has the favorite. So what I'm thinking, and nobody's told me this, what if he does the walkover with the horse and Michael Poli? That, that would be, be cool. cool. That would be really yeah. cool. Hey, Brittany, um, I'm going to put you on the spot, so be prepared. Um, <laughs> speaking of this broadcast, yeah, speaking of broadcast, but given your um, success that you've gotten to enjoy with NBC, um, there's a rumor out there in the TV media circles that mm -hmm. you will find yourself in Paris this summer working the Olympics for NBC. Ooh. Care to comment, perhaps? I have no comment. That would be amazing, though, if that were the case. I mean, Paris sounds incredible. NBC does an unbelievable job with the Olympics. So if that were the case, I would be honored. You mean, I mean, listen, you, you, with all of your uh, experience, I mean, I don't know about other things in other horse disciplines other than thoroughbred racing, but I'm sure you could go cover other stuff, right? I would carry someone's water bottle if that meant that I could be a part of the Olympics. No, truly, I would. I, I have grown up watching the Olympics. I'll never forget sitting with my mom, I think down in San Diego during the London Olympics in the opening ceremony. Uh, it, it is something that has been a tradition of mine to watch with my family, you know, every two years. I'm not just going to say four because I'm a big fan of the Winter Olympics as well. So uh, it, to be a part of something like that, like I said, I would carry someone's water. I would... Um, um, you know, photocopy things, whatever, <laughs> whatever to whatever. Uh, be part of something. Would, 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 I mean, I saw you do uh, swimming, you know, <laughs> well, you did do like a soccer game, right? For Amazon. I did. Yeah, I did yeah. their, um, it was their, uh, premier broadcast. The wave we're playing. Yeah. yeah. For the NWSL, um, Gotham FC against the San Diego wave. And it was, uh, a unique game because it was a champions cup, but the season hadn't actually started the regular season. It was such a fun event to be a part of. You see, obviously, we've seen, especially as of late, women's sports, you know, completely blowing up. Soccer is uh, no different. And it was a really, really wonderful experience to be a part of. The team was great. It was the first time that they were diving into women's soccer as well. And for me, it was covering a completely different sport. So there's a lot of studying that goes into that. But it was it was a blast. I, I can't wait for the next one. Do you think the, I'm not going to call it an explosion, but do you think the the quick growth of women's sports and the coverage of women's sports have allowed you to really branch out and, and just like saying with the wave situation and then what's happening with the, the horse racing, the Olympics that you may or may not, you know, be a part of. Do you think that that's allowed you to really begin to branch your, branch your career out in a way that you may not have seen before that? You know, that's a great question. There have always been um, plenty of, of female broadcasters that I've looked up to. Um, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of Erin Andrews. I think she's fantastic. People that I've worked with, personal friend Christina Blacker, I, in all different sports, I do think that you are seeing the presence of, of women grow. And it very well could be the fact that you're seeing the growth of women's sports as well. Um, little girls need to know that they can do it, right? So they need to see that representation. What Caitlin Clark has been doing um, is remarkable because not only is she an incredible athlete, but she's a great spokesperson, right? And she has buried a lot of or carried a lot of the weight on her shoulders of, uh, and that's not easy with all that pressure, attention, et cetera. It's just a really exciting time. And so I felt very lucky and privileged to be a part of the inaugural broadcast for Amazon Prime and for women's soccer. And I think the sky's the limit for all of them. Yeah, really cool. I mean, really, really cool. I would love to see you have an opportunity to work the Olympics. Seriously, you've done, you've, because I, I, we, I say, I, we, we all got to watch you. I'm going to put this in quotes, grow up on TV, <laughs> you know, uh, through just through horse racing, but you know, opportunities have, have been, you know, put out there. So good for you. Um, you know, one of our, one of our biggest fans and listeners is a guy by the name of coach Steve Bogner. I was wondering if you're going to bring up coach Steve. <laughs> I got to bring him up because, you know, every year he gets to me and he goes, please bring Brittany on the show. I love Brittany and I need to see Brittany and I want to hear from Brittany. So I had to give him his shout out, you know, Brittany. Coach Steve, love you. 
Thank you for the support. Where I mean, are we going to see Coach Steve? Has he been on your show? Because I feel like he deserves to be. You know, he does deserve to be, and he's dealing with a lot. I mean, I, not not to bring things down, but his daughter has been very ill for a long time. I've been following their their journey on Facebook. I've been trying to help them get into certain hospitals and meet with certain people. So, I mean, I just I, so much love for that family, and he's going to be so happy to even hear you say his name. I promise you, you're going to bring a smile to his face today. Well, Coach Steve, sending sending uh, the best to your family, your daughter, and uh, speedy recovery. We hope so. Thinking about you. Um, real quick, about a minute to go here. Would you like to brag at all about your Dodgers? Because we have been all sitting here complaining about the Padres. Mm -hmm. Uh, fair enough. I think uh, the Dodgers haven't been off to the quickest start that we probably thought we, they all would be considering the signings and, and whatnot. Uh, pitching still has a long way to go. It was nice to see Otani, you know, knock a couple out of the park, but it is so early. This is what my dad would tell me. So early. Can we start complaining this early? No. <laughs> we have. <laughs> and do you well, have it's any? A for us, it's a continuation of last right, year. That's right. the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right, a right, continuation right. of forever. Exactly right. right. Um, <laughs> last thing, um, did you watch the Lakers last night? Yeah, and that was a late one for me, too, because I'm on the East Coast now. <laughs> I stayed up until, I don't know, when did that game end? Like midnight? Yeah. Midnight. Almost, yeah, almost one in the morning the, for you. God, the free throws that they were missing right. and not getting the rebounds. It just it felt like such an easy game for them to win if they didn't make those mistakes. But at the end of the day, I, I thought if we got past that game, how are we going to get past another they just didn't look like the team that was going to beat the Nuggets. So hats you're, off to them. Jamal Murray was unbelievable. You're so right. By the way, Spencer Dinwiddie missed two free throws at you know, such a critical point in the yeah. game. I was like, bro, you can't hit these free throws. You can't win this game. No, you can't make those <laughs> mistakes. I think LeBron missed a, a, he a free throw in the final. He did. He, he came back and he hit two free throws late that were really important. But he did. He also missed a free throw. Brittany, listen, have a great Kentucky Derby. Um, have a great broadcast on NBC. Thank you so much for the extended time, for always being available to the show as your career grows. And uh, we we can't wait to see you hopefully this summer at Del Mar. Always. I am such a fan of the three of you. So anytime I get invited feels like an honor. So thank you uh -huh. guys. And um, congratulations again to your daughter. Oh, thank you so much. Brittany Urton from NBC Sports. Everybody listening on radio, stay right where you are. Everybody who's with us on YouTube and audio podcast, we're going to go get on sensor right now. We're in the seven mile casino studios and this is Kaplan and crew. All right, guys, time to get on censored all up in this. Biatch! Oh, yo. So uh, Brittany Urton coming on in the last segment was great. Um, when we hung up with her, like when the segment ended, she was like, hey, uh, thanks a lot for the uh, for the NBC Olympics question. She had no idea that was coming. But somebody had told me that um, they'd heard through good good sources that she was going to be part of NBC's Olympic coverage. Now they got a lot of sources today. Yeah, I know. Mm. Journalists. The Olympics. Yeah. Big the Olympics, Jay came out today. Big time. The Olympics are in July. Hold on. This is now. Oh, thank you. The Olympics Sorry. are in July. There we go. And let me think. This fucking thumbs oh, up. Thing. Dude, top of your laptop or top yep. of your computer, there's a yep. green FaceTime machine. Uh huh. A green icon, excuse me. Yep, I see it. Click it. Yep. And you see where it says reactions? Yeah. Click that. Okay, I don't, why? Don't I want reactions. Don't I want off reactions, off reactions to be on. No, I want reactions no. to be on. You're too okay. thumbs up -y with your with your mannerisms. Yeah, but how do I get to Browner with Browner? Oh, do the heart. Oh, oh shit! Oh. Shit! Yeah. Oh, Browner, boy, yeah. You gotta hold it. Yeah. Yeah. This one. Yeah. Okay, Caitlin Clark. Oh, yeah. My. Oh yeah. 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 Me and we're yeah. gonna get along just fine. Yeah. My wife told me about that one. Oh really? The other one. How many are there? I'm trying. To I think. dude, I love these. I love the reactions. They're just distracting. What is the one? With, how do we get the? How do we get the 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 fireworks? How do we do that? Thumbs Double up. thumbs up. Double yeah. thumbs up. Yes, bitch. What about the Nixon? Yes. Where, where the fuck are my fucking things? You gotta stop shaking them. You gotta oh. hold them. Oh, the Nixon. That makes the confetti. What's the Nixon. The, the, the two hands. Nixon. Makes oh, I gotta turn my reactions on. How about that? That. Oh, help. dude, this is so cool. I love this. Yeah, I do it at the end of every show. I love yeah, it. This this one, dude. Who knows? 
Nothing. And Jackass comes out. How about no. this? Just do anything for anybody? I I don't I don't know. I don't know. I need a list of what's these called again? Yeah, how do we find out? Like if you do this I'm gonna Google. Yeah. List <laughs> my thumbs up again. <laughs> <laughs> but Brittany, somebody told me that Brittany was going to get to be a part of NBC's oh. Olympic coverage. Uh-huh. And I what what's what's thumbs down? It's supposed to be rain. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's pouring. Yeah. Wait, what? Uh, how do you do the, how do you do the rain? Lasers. Nice. Wait, how do you do the rain? Thumbs uh, down. Double thumbs down. That makes it as the rain. Yeah, look, oh, look at me. Man. I'm raining like a motherfucker in this motherfucker. That's weird. Yeah. This one's cool. Lasers. Yeah. Lasers. Balloons. Balloons. Okay, there they are. Mm -hmm. okay. I, That's about it, dude. I see this as being on social media today. Us playing with our new toys. <laughs> <laughs> sure all right yeah Sorry, dude man. yeah Rad, bro. yeah dude it's funny my notes i should read my notes sometimes for like clips mm -hmm. like i like i don't know what i even think sometimes i'm like uh like You're writing anything er earlier i wrote brown or wrong about lebron <laughs> 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 Start la Ma la mayor's an idiot uh <laughs> Padres Hell Week. I don't know why. I don't know what goes through my mind when I just write shit down. That's funny. Well, tomorrow's gonna be a great show because tomorrow Chase Fisher will be here. So we'll talk to him about blenders and about F1 and about you know the San Diego State Aztecs basketball team needing to go into the portal and get a bunch of dudes because their <laughs> guys are leaving. Um, don't we have somebody else tomorrow, Alex? We have already somebody else tomorrow book for tomorrow. I'm trying to remember. No, it was supposed to be Brittany tomorrow, but we did. We had oh. her on today. We have uh, Chris, Chase Fisher on, and then we're gonna have a baseball conversation to to see if you know we need a third party on Thursday between between Mr. Flower Giver and I guess off the bus people. Casey Stern's gonna join us on Thursday. Oh, nice, very nice. Yeah, yeah. very nice. I have a baseball man come in here and tell us who's right and who's wrong. Okay, sweet. Or maybe we're all wrong because, like Brittany said, it's April. Yep. yep. Although but tomorrow be May. May. It'll be yeah. May by the time it's gonna be Casey May. comes on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be May. Really? <laughs> All right. We got to go. We're back tomorrow. Peace out, everybody. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, lasers. dude.